One with one who has eyes as a flame of fire, hair white as snow, his whole countenance shining as the noonday sun. The Bible said when he spoke, it was as the sound of many waters. And as he, as he stepped about, it was the sound of a trumpet. He had power and authority. This book of Revelation is the last book written in the canon of Scripture about 90, 95 A.D. Under the reign of Domitian, many Christians had carried the bodies of their loved ones out to the graveyard. They needed comfort. They needed to know where they were. We believe that probably one of the first books ever written in the New Testament was the book of 1 Thessalonians. The Apostle Paul said, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also, that sleeping Jesus will God bring with him. He wanted them to know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Many of these saints had watched him crucified on the cross. They saw his bloody frame there, the crown of thorns rammed down upon his head. And there he gave up the ghost, and that's all they had seen. Five hundred brethren at one time had seen him resurrected as he appeared before he ascended up into heaven. But my friend, what John sees in the book of Revelation, is carried off into the third heaven to let his eyes lay upon that glorified, risen, eternal, absolute Son of God. In Revelation chapter number 1, he said, I am the Almighty. Now, my friend, there can only be one Almighty, just one. There can't be two. So this Bible tells me that he identifies himself as that eternal, absolute, almighty God that is from everlasting to everlasting. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, he said, I'm alive forevermore. Amen and have the keys of death and hell. That means, my friend, that he's the living one. Seraphims are alive. Cherubims live. Angels live. God lives. But the Lord Jesus Christ lives with a life that is different from any other life in the universe. He said, I'm the living one. Take note of me. I was dead, but now I'm alive. And since he is alive, he's the life giver of life. Life comes from this one, for he is life personified. He's the prince of life. And because he lives, I live. Hallelujah. And make no mistake about it this afternoon, this one body that you see in this casket, the earthly tabernacle which is going to be dissolved, this is the tabernacle left behind. That's not him. He lives. Amen. He lives with the resurrected life of the Lord Jesus Christ. That Bible said, my life is hid with Christ in God. And that's where I am. And that's where he is too. Amen. It's just a simple matter of crossing over the tide, one from one side of the bar to the other, and to be with him. That's the desire of every saint of God that's truly born again by the grace of God. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the fine thing to finish the Bible by exalting the Lord Jesus Christ. How else would you end the word of God but exalt the son of the living God? That's what this Bible is about from Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. If you can read the Bible and not be impressed with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not reading the Bible. You may be reading something else for he said, search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they that testify of me. He said, John, I am the living one. I want to get a hold of that tonight. We're not dead people. We don't celebrate death. We're not talking about death. There is no death here. This is a living one. He lives with resurrected life. Amen. And he'll never die. He said, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. He will never taste death. He will never see death. He'll never fear death and death can't touch him because the prince of life has broken the power of death, amen. And so my friend, I rejoice. I rejoice because I know him, not knew him, know him. And one day I'll see him again. I'll see my brother. He's cut from a different cloth. He was raised in a different generation. He came from a different place. He truly is that old boy out in the field somewhere that the hand of God was laid upon him and he called him to preach. He anointed him from on high. He might have had a fourth grade education, but he was educated with the power of God. He had wisdom this world cannot offer. He spoke words that cannot be found on this earth. He preached under the power and the anointing of God. The first time I ever heard about this, brother, a man said, Preacher, I want to take you to hear a preacher. I said, Fine, let's go. I went into the revival meeting and Brother Ed Ballou was preaching. He whispered into my ear and he said, Do you see that man? I said,
said, yes. He said, he used to take the Bible and open a scripture and read that scripture and then close the Bible and walk out in front of the pulpit and for the next 45 minutes he preached the word of God and never looked at the book again. Do you know how he could do that? Do you know where that came from? Do you know why you can do that? It's in here. It's in his heart and in his soul. That's the kind of preacher that this man was. How could he be that preacher? Because he knew him that liveth and was dead and behold he's alive forevermore and has the keys of death and hell the Bible has 66 books and they're marvelous books but there is no book in the Bible that opens up the Lord Jesus Christ like the book of Revelation it starts with a glorified one then it takes you into heaven and you see the Lamb of God before the very throne of God you've got a ball of fire crying holy, holy, holy you've got cherubim on one side and cherubim on the other crying holy, holy, holy angels innumerable crying holy, holy, holy make no mistake about it friend when you lay your eyes on him you'll cry holy, holy, holy too but this lamb of God as it had been slain from the foundation of the world is before the throne of God he that sat upon that throne is the almighty father that absolute eternal spirit that no man has ever seen no eye has ever beheld save the son the bible said no man knows the father but the son no man knows the son but the father only the son can take you to the father only the father can take you to the son if you're born again this afternoon it's because the father drew you to the son no man comes unto me except glory to God I'm glad I know him because he took me to the son in the book of revelation a lamb appears before the father slain as it had been from the foundation of the world and my friend throughout that book we follow that as it progresses and then in the last chapter right before for the closing of the book of Revelation the Lamb of God has been exalted to such a place that he no longer is before the throne he and the Father are one on the throne oh yes when God is all in all I want to see what you see brother blue I want to walk where you walk my dear brother I want to hear what you hear I want to see him I want to see him as he is I want to know him not as the flesh can know him. I want to know him as that book and the Holy Ghost can reveal him to mankind. I don't weep for him. He was a friend to me. He was an inspiration to me. But he called me a few days ago and he said, Preacher, I said, hey, brother. He said, I'm about to leave here now. I'm going to be leaving. And he said, I want you to preach my funeral. Oh, brother, I said, you ain't going nowhere. I said, God's not done with you. You're going to be here until the Lord comes back. Well, the Lord did come back. He called me one time and he said, I'm talking to him on the phone. And he said, I walked through this old house. He said, I've turned the lights out. He said, I walked to where she walked. And I stand there and I weep. I touch her picture and I weep. He said, I walk to this old, cold, dark house. And he said, my heart breaks for my sweetheart. I want to see her. I miss her. I love her. Now, my friend, a lot of folks today don't understand what a sweetheart is. They could have been married 150 years. She was still his sweetheart. He loved this woman, my friend. Make no mistake about it. This man knew what love was about. He said, I walked to that old cold house and I miss her, I love her. Oh, I want to see her again. And then the other day he called me and he said, Preacher, they've just given me a few weeks to live. And they said, I'm going to go. I said, well now, brother, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to ask God Almighty to bless you and comfort you with the Holy Ghost. They told me, first of all, he had six months to live. Then they said he had weeks to live. And then, my friend, it came down to days. And as a matter of fact, I firmly believe with all of my heart 
that the Almighty intervened. He came down and got him before he, before the natural time would be due by dying with cancer. I believe he came and got him. I believe God said, Gabriel, hey Lord, there's my servant. Go get him. And my tell me that he had the curtains drawn. They said he had the curtains. I talked to Tina. She said the curtains were drawn. The lights were out. And he said in that old dark house, he said, preacher, why did he do that? Because his world wasn't here. His world was there. He was living for that world. And he was waiting for the one that would come and get him. And so that time, you saw now, preacher, you don't know this. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You don't either. Hey. And Gabriel came into that house and he walked up to he walked up and he said, Preacher Baloo. And Brother Baloo looked at that shining light of an angel, of the angel of God and the glory of God, the one that he preached about so long. He said, I've come to get you. And I'll tell you right now, he reached down and took his soul and it was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, which is in the presence of the Lord. And my friend, that was only the beginning. Who do you think was waiting on him when he crossed the bar? Who was on the other side? Nobody but a sweetheart, amen. Pauline was there to meet her friend, her boyfriend, her husband, the one she loved and gave Gave up a few months ago and he brought them together again. Yeah, preacher, I wish I could believe something like that. My friend, let me tell you something. I know that in my soul, I know that the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But it's only the life which I now live in the flesh. There is a greater life, a greater world, a greater land, and that's to be with him. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Goodbye, old friend. One more thing i got to say about him. He's a warrior. Amen. 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 He's a warrior. Say, so what's a warrior, preacher? He carried the banner. He went into the, he went into the thick of battle. He went, in, he went in to face the enemy. And my friend, he carried that gospel of Christ to every place he sent him. He lived a warrior, and he left here a warrior. And I'm better because I knew him. God bless the name of Ed Ballou. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll meet you again, brother. You believe God was in that? Amen. I believe that the Lord let my papa look over the balconies of heaven. Said, that's your friend. He's preaching about me. Thank you, Brother Charles. What a message. Now, at this time, we're going to have, this is Dr. Ray, Calvin Ray Evans. He's from Rubyville, Ohio. Is that right? If my granddaddy had one more trip, one more, that he and his soul wanted to go to somewhere he need, felt like in his heart he needed to go to and be at it was with these people right here my family can tell you that he, Papa loved Calvin Ray Evans and the people of Rubyville, Ohio and it's an honor to have you today and would have you to come up here and dismiss us in prayer Bless you, my brother. Mason told me I could make a few remarks and after being friends with Dr. Ed Ballou for nearly 30 years, I'll tell you what he told our people the first time he ever stepped in the pulpit. He said, I'll tell you the same thing Elizabeth Taylor told her seventh husband, I'll not keep you long. <laughs> and that was Dr. Ed Ballou. I do, want to, I do want to say just two things real quick and then I'll pray because our preachers have done their job. I think Brother Ed would have been so pleased with this day. Thank you girls for allowing us to be a part of your life. Interrupt your time together so frequently. Not only on behalf of your dad but your precious mother. One of the first calls I got when my dad made his crossing to heaven was from Ed Ballou. And he said, now, your dad's already there, and your mom will follow close behind. 
She did 15 months later. And he said, if you need anything, you call me. And I would call him. We talk frequently. And uh, we appreciate so much his life and his ministry. When I was a pastor, 23 years of age, you heard me right, 23 years of age, Dr. Ed Ballou came to our church to hold revival. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. But he told me when I talked to him the first time, I've got to come. I felt like the greatest preacher in the world getting to sit beside a man of God.